Hello, David. All right, everybody. Welcome to the September 8th, 2018 Art Stream right. Live. And you can see my badge here. I guess I can see my badge. There you go. It should like it's a, that's what flag is. I'm an art detective investigator tonight. You get curious? Look at that. And what we're going to talk about are tools that they use for examining artwork. Right. Investigation. Right. So I thought, uh, this is an idea I got from Sherry Thomas, based on a concept from her. So I thought this would be another interesting topic for us to go through tonight. So, we'll bring up our first slide go. and get going. Alright, tools for investigating artwork. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight on this one. So, here we go. Okay. Now there we go. We have several things going on. Another yeah, screen here, okay. just explaining the folks. So here. technical <coughs> examination of paintings can provide valuable information, such as, and these are some of the things it's good for. You can find out the materials and the techniques the artists use. That's one thing you can do. You can reveal damage to a painting that's been concealed by past restoration. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can look at the current conditions of it, find out what kind of shape it really is in. It'll help conservators plan new treatments on paintings. And then it gives you historical facts to help identify an artist, establish dates it was made, and another thing they're finding out. <laughs> uncover portraits. Uncover fake yeah. pieces of artwork, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be more technical than this. A lot of tools here. A lot of tools. These are some of the mes methods that are available. And mm -hmm. I'm, we're, we aren't going to go through all that, folks, so don't panic. But, uh, <laughs> but different types of lighting, different ways of light frequencies to right. use. And, and with these different light types and free frequencies, they can pick up certain pigments, right. certain varnishes, surface conditions. All that helps with the taking care of art and investigating artwork. Mm -hmm. so that's and if some, anybody wants to see the details, mm -hmm. they can. Uh, th th this will be a video that they can right. stop, and rewind, another, and stop it on this. And another good that. thing, just to let folks know. All right, I've got the urals posted on the image. Right. So right. if you want to go look online, mm -hmm. and this is a good open source.org, CHS open source, for right. scientific information. So, that would be a neat chart. Now, this is a neat idea. Raking light mm -hmm. photography, R-A-K. And basically, it's, it's just putting light at a low level to the surface. Right. But what it's great for, it shows everything on the surface. Mm -hmm. Areas of retouching, losses, is right. the painting buckle. You'll see it with this. Mm -hmm. So you can look at brush work, warping of a canvas. Got the little schematic then showing the low angle lighting. So it's yeah. a simple idea, but very effective for looking at surface conditions. And another example, it's great for wall murals. So we're looking mm -hmm. at that. Like you can see tool marks. Yeah, every yeah. defect in the wall, yeah. everything. See how the paint application, did they did they carve into the wall? Did they incise into it? Mm -hmm. And I have a little example down there of Hieronymus Bosch down there at the bottom left showing how it shows on a painting Christ mm -hmm. mock, you know, give you the effects of the brushwork. Right. So it's a simple thing but very effective when investigating a painting. Now, yeah, photo micrograph. Now we're getting more technical. More technical, it's a, and like it says up there, it's a photograph of an image through a microscope. Mm -hmm. And so you can really zoom in on artwork. And this is a painting we got here of a John, of John Black I, Van Eyck, I'll get his name right. That's his wife. And what they wanted to do was clean it, and they mm -hmm. used the microscope to help them study the surface as they cleaned in there. We've got a little sample down there of, of actually mm -hmm. from the painting. And up in the top right, there's an actual sample from a 19th century, about 25x magnification. But you mm -hmm. can actually <coughs> see a cross section and the weave of the canvas with the pigment on it. Yeah. So this is a tool to help look at the surface, find out defects, control when you clean so you don't clean too much. Right. Right, so <laughs> it's a very helpful tool. Now, X-radiograph 
I said that right? Yeah, X radio. <laughs> Ra radiography. 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 Thank you. I, I'll get it. <laughs> I knew I'd mess that up. Or is it radiology? No, no, you've got it right. Okay. I think you said it correctly. And that's a, you know, they make films using radiation from radiation substances. Mm -hmm. It's an x-ray. And it gives them information about the different materials by density. Mm -hmm. It gives them structure. It, it helps to distinguish between the ground. Some of them contain lead, so the materials affect the rate of how the x-rays mm -hmm. are absorbed. It tells them about if there's chalk on it, and so it can show different elements in of a painting. Right. And what and and even it'll go all the way from the top of the canvas to the stretcher, mm. as you can see there. Now, what's neat about that painting is that the what they did that's a Jean Francois Millet. He had entered a painting into an, an exhibition. He didn't get in, mm. so he painted over it. <laughs> he turned the camera, it was a vertical of a figure, it didn't mm -hmm. get accepted, so he turned it horizontal and made the painting. Hmm. It is now there, the wood saw. Yeah, I have, I have a painting and yeah. that has four paintings on it. Right, so <laughs> these secrets are no longer <laughs> secrets. They can actually go into the painting and see. And I've got some other examples coming up where we've got some of these X radiographs mm -hmm. of famous artworks. Okay, Pablo Picasso. You know, artists wouldn't have started out. Well, they're famous, they're poor. Mm -hmm. He was poor. <laughs> and so he painted over other paintings. And they examined this piece of the blue room and mm -hmm. found out when he rotated it sideways, he had a portrait of a bearded man wearing a jacket and a bow tie underneath it. And you see our little buddy over there, it's the power of x ray vision. Mm -hmm. So that's what they can do with these techniques. So. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting back into Pablo Picasso again, and this is the uh, woman ironing. And when they examine that, lo and behold, there's a portrait. Huh. And the portrait's actually upside down in relationship to her. I flipped it over. It's a portrait of a man with a mustache. So that's underneath it. <laughs> and now that he's famous, they like knowing what he did, how he worked. It gives them ideas about the kind of work techniques he mm -hmm. had. Another famous one is the old guitarist. Right. When they examined it. There's a portrait of a woman underneath that one. So this gives us some historical insight into how he worked and what he did. Mm -hmm. So we've got some more examples of these. All right, Vincent Van Gogh. Underneath that nice piece patched grass, there's a portrait of a Dutch woman. Ah, now she's turned sideways that? in the original. I, like I said, mm -hmm. I flipped her. And they found that fascinating because in his career, early in his career, he was painting a lot of portraits like that, mm -hmm. and I think he painted that about 1884. But like hmm. I said, didn't have materials, paint over with. Yeah. <laughs> hey, artists do it now. Yeah, they do it now. <laughs> I didn't waste any time. Okay, now here we go, Francisco Goya, and it's a portrait of Don Ramon Satu. But underneath that portrait is a portrait of a gentleman in a military outfit, and they believe that's the brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, Joseph. Hmm. Now, at the time, political things weren't good. They just got Napoleon out of Spain. Mm -hmm. So having that kind of painting around was not a good idea. <laughs> so Goya painted over it. <laughs> Probably thing a good idea. Safe and thing. the color added to that was by a conservator mm -hmm. on, on a copy that they made from the original x-ray, just to get right. an idea of how it would have looked. Hmm. Now, the one on the right is interesting. They were going to clean the painting. The bigger image is the original painting. Mm -hmm. And they may have to zoom in later, but in the smaller image, there's a whale beached, <laughs> a beached whale on the beach. No, oh, you and when see they it, yeah. yeah, when they x-rayed it, they found that whale was in there. So when they cleaned it, they knew that was a part of the original painting. Hmm. So they put the whale back in. And I thought that was kind of wild. <laughs> now, George Surratt, yeah. mm -hmm. young woman powdering herself. This was his mistress. In the, now, the original, he's got a nice little picture of a flower up there. Mm -hmm. But in the one he did, first version, he had his little portrait in there. Or was he peeking in the window? Yeah, or he's peeking <laughs> in the window. And, uh, you know, like it says there, this is Madeline Noblosh. And he went ahead and covered that up to protect his dignity. Mm -hmm. Who cares about hers? But, right. But he covered that up. So I thought that was it. So now with this technology, artists don't have any secrets anymore. Mm-mm. Now, we're going to get into infrared photography for examining art, and there's all kinds. they got infrared reflected, infrared transmitted, infrared false color, infrared fluorescent. And what it does, this infrared will penetrate below the surface, 
and it reveals drawings and undercoatings mm -hmm. that the artist put there. And so I've got those little graphs to show everybody how the light goes in and how it comes out. Like, you know, what's interesting, you have visual light go in, well, you'll get different light coming out depending on the light you're hitting it with first. Right. Right. So I thought that was neat. And you see Einstein up there. He thinks that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. <laughs> the laughing Einstein. Now, what I thought would oh, be fun. We could have zoomed in on that. I'm sorry. Well, let's uh, get a little closer look to the diagram. You want to zoom in on it? Yeah. But so. uh, one of the things I, I wanted to do, you know, we've got all these different mm -hmm. techniques we're talking about. And I found something really interesting. Like I said, the urals are on each one of these. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the original website. But this is a study of a painting by a man named Fritz Henry Lane. It's called The Harbor of Boston with the City in the Distance, mm -hmm. circa 1846-47, it's a while on canvas. But they've done a series of photographs mm -hmm. of this one piece using these different spectrums from the electromagnetic spectrum. So like normal light on the left, what it looks like in normal light, and they tried to balance the light to get a good consistent color, mm -hmm. good grays, good base, because they want to use that original to make comparisons with later, so mm -hmm. it's very important. Now, ultraviolet radiation. They use this to help them identify areas of retouching, different types of varnish. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you go to the next one. Now we're using the raking light again. Yeah. But now they can examine the surface texture, and you'll see all the cracks in the painting, and all of that and then they go back to their uh, X radiography and then they can mm. see the underlying densities of the paint you can look at how the paint brush strokes were kind of in the sky rounded right and flow on a curve where the water is smoother and straighter and it shows on the structure of the paint the density of the paint right so that's all of that's helpful for people to study art take care of it learn about it now I, I, I thought ah. this was neat simple idea transmitted light the light source gets put behind the artwork. Mm -hmm. So now it's shining through the artwork. Hmm. And what that helps them see, like on the right they did when doing that technique, but they used the, radi the, the, the radiograph, mm -hmm. and they could s detect pinholes the artist had hmm. in the camera. He put them there for whatever reason, and they can find them by shining the light from the back side. Awesome. It shows them the cracks, tears, paint losses, thinly painted areas. It gives them more uh, information. Pulling strings across for perspective. Uh, he may have been, yeah, huh. to get his perspective right. Hmm. Interesting. It is. Now, we get to this, and I usually try to avoid this when I'm photographing art, but mm -hmm. a specular reflected light where they're trying to get the light to bounce almost straight back. Mm -hmm. And what they said that helps them with, it, it makes areas become clearer. Mm -hmm. So, I said, okay, that's interesting. And then we go back to the infrared mm -hmm. technique over here on the right, and I don't know if they can see it, but on the horizon line on the very far right, on the original, you'll see a little boat. Mm -hmm. It's not in, it's, well, the finished painting, you'll see it. In the original, it wasn't there. He added it mm -hmm. later. So these are some of the mm -hmm. things that they're able to find out about pieces of artwork using these tools. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I thought, okay, there's a lot of famous paintings. You know, I wanted to examine them. So I teamed up with our, <laughs> you know, Art Stream Live Research Center. Uh, yep. And uh, brought up this painting. You know, this uh -huh. is a we Very featured, famous painting. Famous <laughs> painting. We have featured this before, you know. Dogs playing poker. Mm -hmm. Now, you notice the front here, you got the two guys slipping cards to each other. But this mm -hmm. is an art stream live exclusive. You know, we ran it through the lab and wanted to know, well, what could have been going on underneath yeah. this one? Yeah, to so, see what, what was on the canvas To see before. what could have been on that canvas. And what? I could, I could not believe it, but <laughs> a portrait of we Big Buck. We need to zoom in on that. <laughs> a, a portrait of our mascot, Big Buck, <laughs> is underneath the painting. He gets above. around. Man. He does. And who would have ever believed it? Now, like it says there, that's another art mystery solved. That's right. You know, so We're that, stacking them up. That's our stream live, man. And that's our <laughs> x-ray buddy up there, x-ray vision, man. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he works in the lab. Right. So this is what they came up using that, that X radiography technique. Mm -hmm. They were able to find out. You can see the original structure bar, everything. Right. So it's all there. You can't hide anything. You can't, not a thing. So I yeah. thought, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I would have never thought. Just a gift of science. A gift of science <laughs> and the wonders of technology. And you're seeing it here <laughs> on our stream live. And of course, we give our fair use credit. Yep. Like it says, like our laughing Einstein, giving credit where credit is due. We didn't make it, but we found it. And I mean, we're just touching this lightly across the top tonight. Yep. I mean, there's a lot you can, people can do 
get on the web, check those zeros out, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's amazing what yeah. what they can do now with the technology. And you think you're painting over something? Ah <laughs> uh, ha ha! Hundred years from now, you know. Yeah, what's you up? Get on up. What's underneath the surface <laughs> is no longer hidden, right? Mm -hmm. So that's part of the idea of, of using tools to examine art and the technology. Yeah. So once again, thank you. Sherry Thomas for that idea. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. That you gave us and we built on it. Like we said, you got an idea, mm -hmm. let us know. You know, you never know what's going to be on what's going on. And we should mention here that Monday, this coming Monday, is a special day. It's Charles Smith's birthday. Whoa. Ancient. So, you know, what, uh, this is, they, they watch your evening news for the parade schedule. Right. And uh, um, what is Bruce did with the play tablet? Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, he is a potter. So. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. For yeah. Most likely mm -hmm. was then. Yeah. So anyway, I, okay. I wanted to get that in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Happy birthday. See you, Charles. Charles. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah. I think that was kind of a kind of a deep scientific yeah. study, right? But try not yeah, to a little technical, down. but yeah. Yeah. But the visuals, like you know, you see what it's used for and what happens with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty impressive. So okay. No it up. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight, right? Anything else you'd like to share? No, there? that's it. All right. Well, everybody, we appreciate you watching tonight. Right. Hope you enjoyed it. Good night. Good night.